Hey folks, it's Rick. I've got another very, very careful review today. This time, old Chip has lent us another one of his guitars. This is a 1984 Fender Esprit. It's the Esprit Standard. And we're going to jam over Andy Usher's guitar track coming up. This guitar is really uh, quite a gem. I'm digging it. Funky Strut in B minor. Okay, folks, is that thing working? I hope so. Boy, I'm gonna turn that up. How's this? Much better? Good. Okay, I've got Chips Esprit. It's a Fender 1984. This is a guitar. It looks like a, a solid body. Let me uh, put my face back in the picture. It looks a little bit like a solid body, but it, it's it's really a semi-hollow. I just looked inside this pocket down here on the back. I opened up that little access Look panel. This. Well, it's all shielded, and it's got a nice thing lead going up to the top, and the back of this is shielded, and it's semi-hollow. I don't know if it's the same up here. It doesn't sound that different. It's real light. I'll weigh it. I don't know, but it's light. <laughs> It's out of tune. What a wonderful little guitar. I'm going to go into this. This is likely made in the Fuji Gen factory. Same as my Ibanez AR30. From around the same time. That's a 1983. And this is a 1984. Both made in Japan. Probably both came out around the four dollars to $500 range. Well, actually, that was more like a $300 range, the Ibanez. <laughs> So let's let's just go through this thing. This is basically a Les Paul setup with the switch down here instead of up here. It has these humbuckers, which totally look different. They come in this plastic casing, uh, but they sound really, really beautiful. Very clean sounding, very nice string separation. The stop tail piece and the two pneumatic bridge. These are rollers. Look at that. It has a beautiful old aged looking cream binding. The top is two pieces, it's alder, and it's chamber. So this is from Fender in 1984. So these came out in the Master Series of guitars from Fender. Uh, they included the Flame, the Esprit. The Flame and the Esprit look kind of the same. The Flame had more of an offset on the cutaways, and it was a little bit smaller. I think it was a 13 inches at the main bout, uh, whereas this one's 14 inches at the main bout. that came out in the Master Series were the Diakisto archtop, carved archtop guitars, and they're beautiful. This is a 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length. Who are they trying to copy? This is a maple neck, three pieces, maple neck with a rosewood fingerboard, a mother of pearl dot inlays. It has a 12 inch radius, which is pretty cool. If you judge this guitar based on today's standards, what people like, it's got a lot of the boxes checked. You know, the roller bridge, 
It's got a flatter radius. It's got a wider neck. The nut width is 1.71 inches. came in uh, Black Cherry Sunburst and Autumn Burst. This is the Autumn Burst. Very nice. I like these knobs. They're these plastic knobs. They remind me of uh, something that would be on a 1982 rack mount reverb system. <laughs> Take the way that the neck joins, it's it feels really nice on the hand. It's really a good feel. Although, well, it's a pretty thick guitar. Pretty thick. What kind of frets are they? I have no idea. I think they're a little bit smaller. They're probably medium jumbo, but they're a little bit smaller. This was intended by Fender to be an alternative to the Gibson ES-335. Special designed Schaller humbuckers. They estimated between late 1983 and 1985, a few thousand were shipped. Uh, said the guitars were successful in terms of public perception. In 1986, Robin Ford was brought on as an endorser of the Esprit model before Fender reworked the concept and dubbed the guitar the Robin Ford Signature Model. So this turned into the Robin Ford Signature Model. Okay, beautiful guitar. I've really been digging having it. Polished it up real nice. Before it goes back to chip, do one more little jam on it. All right, everybody. Peace. All right, later on.